I mean, you can ask me anything. You can look at anything. You know, you can look at the, the people, the health, the dependency is their codependency. Mm. From a perspective of an outsider that I've maybe heard, you know, that maybe concerns came to you also mm. about us. And uh, just to open yourself on that side to say there's, there's nothing that, that we are hiding. Um, Welcome everyone, welcome to this uh, incredible platform and I'm with my uh, friend, Pastor Rudolf. We're gonna touch on something so interesting tonight and I know this is something that, that you have a lot of experience in, a lot of expertise in working. Uh, that is the science of, is a church a cult? What Absolutely. is a Christian cult? You know, the influence of it, how people get programmed into it. What is the reality? How can people look out for it? Anybody that is in the church, what are the signs for it? Because it's now so prominent. And I think the signs is so subtle that this is a very important subject. The church, the mm -hmm. foundation and the strength of a church's families. If you just look at South Africa, there's approximately over a thousand cults just in South Africa. Now, sure. if I talk about cults, I'm not talking about a normative church that believe that the Holy Spirit operates or work behind the scenes. Yes. I'm talking about active cults where people are being manipulated, people are distorting the word of God, people are using uh, obviously religion for their own financial gain, etc, etc. And for quite some time I said to Leon, you know, I've actually reached out, I've sent numerous messages and every time I would just get his PayPal account details <laughs> and he would tell me, please give on this platform. And I got so frustrated. I said to my wife, you know what, this guy is definitely seeing my message because in Facebook, you can see the little icon appear next to the message, which yes. is red. And this guy's just sending me his PayPal details. And I said, I'm really trying to have a conversation with this individual, but he just won't listen to me. In actual fact, it is a fake profile. So maybe let's start off with a quote from David Brees. Uh, and he gives a, a, a very good understanding of what it means when we speak about a cult. Uh, and let me just read this quote to you. He says, one of the marks of cults uh, is that it elevates a person or the words of a human leader to a messianic level. Uh, the predictable characteristics of members in a cult is that they will soon be quoting what the leader has said, but not the Bible. Nothing is measured by the text and a messianic human leader uses his power and his intelligence and his personality by which he imposes his ideas and his directives on the ignorant. All too often, these converts then uh, go to a religion and stand in an ordinate awe of this person that will ultimately bring them out of the true faith into a cultic system. You do not believe that a vision of encounter is something that is exclusive only to you and encounter. And you've cultivated a very unique experience that nobody else has. Hmm. You actually mentioned quite clearly that, no, 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 we've got a gospel concern for the church and families. Yes, yes. I think, Rudolf, you know, I think that is one of the, one of the, first and um, prominent signs of when it comes to a cult or a church that's operating a cult or a group that's operating a cult is the exclusivity mm. of uh, we are the only ones that's right only our truth mm -hmm. it's a secret truth it's mm. a it's a it's a agnostic type of a secret truth but it's you know and nobody else is right and unless they join us and align with us become part of the elite Absolutely. and they get access yes, to the special yes. knowledge and you know then they are part of that now that is one of the first signs and and uh, you know we have done two things to to really circumvent that or to make sure you know when I got into ministry especially when you plant the church i've done i turned the ministry travel to a lot of churches mm. we've seen mistakes we've seen cults mm. and um, we just made it so such a principle in us to say that i mean i was you know i've been doing we've helped people coming out of the cult we've helped people coming out of christian cults and uh, you know that we don't want any of those things in our ministry mm. uh, so uh, you know it's a it's a very it's a very moral issue for us that we are right in that regard and because of that we've set up a certain structure that i believe that many cult leaders don't have um uh, for example, in our statement of faith, but also in our legal documents, you know, our church has a has a. I have a board of directors, which is for the legal requirements of the mm -hmm. land. Uh, we have run a non-profit. I have no access into any funds of the church. Absolutely, no. I don't even Repeat see it. it. What? <laughs> I have no access into the funds of the church or mm -hmm. even see it. Mm -hmm. I have a financial board that then runs not to control the church in any way. No, yeah. We understand yeah. the whole balance of leadership and etc. And then we have also a uh, pastors, you know, which is this spiritual side, spiritual board of the church. We also then have on top of the spiritual presbytery, which is men that is more mature than me, more credible than me. And they can pick up the phone any moment, call me and tell me uh, you've done wrong yet. And I listen to them. I'm accountable to them. Mm. Apart from that, we've, inst we've incorporated. And this is right from the beginning of the church, an ex independent church, independent board that can step in if 
I don't listen to any of those type of things, you mm, know. So, mm. And I did it to protect, I've seen ministries. And they're not yes men, for, by the way. They're oh, not no, yes no, no, men. No. It's not people you handpicked and you said, oh, these guys affirm everything I say. Yes. I picked them. Yes. Not at all. No, no, okay. because because I saw, we saw ministers' lives destroyed. I saw people, go, yeah, you have also seen moves of God where it becomes exclusive and absolute power destroys, you know. Mm, so, and corrupts. Yeah. So, so we have put that in place and then together with a family structure yeah. and really to make sure the word is right. But focus on families, you know, one of the mm, other mm. signs of it of a cult is they destroy yeah, the family second. unit. They destroy the family no, and, unit. And, and they, there's been a lot of people that have said, wow, Leon is, is you know, and the church itself, you know, they're taking my son, they're taking my daughter, they're taking people away from the church. They're even disallowing, you know, these individuals to see someone else outside of the family. And, and there's a great concern that that is something that is an occultic structure where yes. people are being isolated. I'm not talking about being protected because yes, yes. Uh, you've also explained to me and we've dealt with Some an individual where there are abusive yes. situations. But just for the sake of control, you do not isolate people, you do not control, you do not tell people that come to encounter church, you are never allowed to see the family that is outside of the church. In actual fact, you encourage people to go to their family and to well, minister to their family. Yes, we actually have a principle where, where, we, where, we, where we, um, we, we prioritize mm. the family relationship and restoration above the, com and I need to make this clear, above the commitment to the church, not to the faith. You know, I will never put family over our faith. You know, mm. we there's, there's a thing called persecution. And, sure. uh, but, you know, to the commitment where people say, and we see in these cults many times, they'll keep people busy mm. night, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and they have no time with family and friends. And, you know, we've just always come from the principle of the church is not going to be strong if families are not strong. So, And, and people don't realize this. Sorry, I'm interrupting you. You said to me from day one, we're actually a family church. Yes. And I think the perception a lot of people have is that Encounter is only a church of miracles. Yes, yes, yes. And that's, you, you said to me, that is that could be the furthest from the truth. Yes. You know, that we want to see God move. We want to see God negotiate His Spirit and God do certain things, which is wonderful. But ultimately, it's about families. And uh, maybe you want to tell people that. Maybe they need to know that as part of the church, there's a concern for, for the flock. Yes. Uh, it's not about signs and wonders. And you do not claim that there's instant things happening in the church where people can come for a quick fix. Certain yes, things need to be oh, worked yes. through and moved through. How do we emphasize on families? How do we emphasize to say that we are not a miracle church? And I think, you know, the reality, Rudolf, is family doesn't trend on YouTube. Mm, family mm. doesn't trend on social I media. Agree, I agree. I agree. So it. when we do post things on that, it doesn't trend, you know, but sensational things trend. And uh, it just happened over the years that certain things began to trend. And uh, we only realized it afterwards. You know, when, when people say to us, they hear that we are not about family. So we are shocked. We're thinking about but that's the very core of, of our ministry. Mm. And then we didn't realize obviously the image that is going out. And I think it would be very good for every every church and every ministry to really understand that danger when it comes now to this social media world, sure. cancel culture, all mm. these things, mm. reactions and exposures. And, you know, uh, uh, that, that you are really exposed on every level. You know, mm. every word is judged, everything that you say. And, and we have, I've got a pastoral structure. We've got over 12 pastors, ordained pastors in the church that's been with me for many years, you know, right from, from some of them from day one. Mm. They take care of the family units. We have from there going into cell groups. And one thing we make sure is to never keep the family busy in the week. It's one of our main, main priorities. Now we believe in cell groups. We have cell groups on a Wednesday evening. We got Bible college, but that's not a necessity. That is an extra that we want to do. Then we have training like a discipleship course, but that's also just you know, it'll be one week and then maybe another one that's just a month. And so, but we keep this balance because you, you burn people out, mm -hmm. you know, you... And well, the, in certain cults, that's actually the strategy is you want to break down family structure sure. and you want to break down, uh, you know, the fabric of that family so that you can build in whatever you want. Yes. Uh, yes. And you would say that, no, 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 we, we, we are collectively understanding that, you know, there should be time for family. There should be a administering and yes. assurance that family is taken well, I think, care of. I think in common sense, for me, planning a church, that's how we did it in our, in our innocence, with, with mm. all due respect. You want a church to grow. Number one, it's families. You know, it's, it's you know, we, mm, we've never had a course. mindset of to break down. And there is those leaders and cult leaders that do that. But the strength, and so we've put in the structure, structure pastoral structure. And uh, when we planted our church, the first photos, in fact, when we announced that the planting of a church, like an advertising type just that the church we planted, was all families. Mm, it was mm. always our, our, our strength. When and, we got counseling, we have, uh, we have divorce care. We've got, um, you know, we've got, mm. uh, we've got after divorce care. That's mm. very important. We, I just, 
sent all my pastors and we did it in the church before we mm. got to the church uh, before we got a, a person out of marriage in the church I sent all my pastors from my side personally every single couple to go for marriage counseling which me and my wife also went through mm. and it's not because we are damaged it's to be growing all the time because be we, you have mm. to grow in order to for your church to be healthy mm. so you know I, the healthier the pastors, the healthier the church is. And then we got that same individual out to help all my pastors to come and do a seminar at the church. And we do those things yearly. You know? no, so that's very good. I think that is a very, you know, they break the family down. And um, uh, that is one of the signs is that if there's an isolation from family members, a separation from family members, uh, to say that you must cut your family out. You know, oh, scripture cool. can so easily be used, you know, your associations, your friends and uh, people, they use those things. And it's 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 very dangerous. Um, if the family unit is not put uh, focus on, there is a great sign in a cult. Yeah, one of the tenets of a cult that you've also mentioned is that cults will preach and create their own special revelation uh, that goes way beyond the boundary of scripture. And uh, I want to say to people, you know, I, I can take John MacArthur and I can take his Christology and I've got certain issues with his Christology and in his sermon, certain instances and certain things that he has said, which sounds quite vicarious um, and there needs to be a context. But you've not created any special revelation based on your prophecies, which now is higher than the Word of God, yes. or is higher than the authority of Scripture. No, things like that get gets exaggerated. Any prophecy that we give to people, especially those in our church, uh, because it's the predominant gift that, that flows in our church, we never want to be known as a prophetic church, mm. as, a, as a family church. So it's just a gift that is predominant. But our people know that, uh, you know, first of all, prophets are not infallible. They they do mistake prophecies in part, and we understand all those, all those dynamics, but it's you know, it has to be weighed and measured up with the Word of God. Paul says in the Corinthians, have other prophets, two or three prophets, to judge the prophecy. Exclusive special revelation, whether it comes by teaching and revelation or prophecy, uh, again, it comes to that individual, the leader, not having any other accountability above him, absolute power. Then revelation comes out. And then it's dangerous because there's nobody that can say to you no. There's nobody that can phone you and help you, you know, and all of us are weak. Um, we saw this with great leaders that we even spoke about today, that massive ministries. And and they just go out of accountability, get a special revelation, and, and that, and it's something that was ordained to be a great move of God, is destroyed. Mm, absolutely. You know? Yet the gift is in them still. Mm. So, exclusivity of no, we have never done that. But I think because we've put that structures in place, you know, again the accountability structures. If I step out, a lot of people say, but nobody addressed him. But they didn't see somebody addressing. You, mm. Just by mistake, I wouldn't say that that we preach doctrine right. We corrected on as in a orthodox doctrine where I was corrected by my oversight, never like that. But sometimes I from Leon, uh, you said something that might just be perceived wrong here. And, you know, I have somebody that can phone me mm -hmm. and correct me. And if I'm not accountable to that, I have my board of directors, pastors that then step in and uh, they are not yes men, you know, uh, for the safety of the church. Well, and, and something that really, I think that we need to say is the moment we got connected and I said, there's an opportunity for us to get together. You mentioned, and you said, we need to go online and we need to speak about this because I want to show people, I want to make myself accountable to the things yes. that I've said. Yes, yes. And like I said, I've been in Muslim Christian dialogues and discussions where I said something in an environment where the Muslims took me on. And I was wrong. Certain things we do, certain things we say, we can't take back. It's on a social media platform. People take it on. People dissect it. People throw it back to us and they say, this is problematic. And, you know, there is a form of accountability that we can clearly see yes. and that you've invited. And that's why I'm here. <laughs> I mean, if, if people think is Luan open to any form of scrutiny, well, I'm here. Um, and, and, and I say to you that that is quite brave because I know, you know, a lot of people that will not do that. Yes. But it shows the heart. It shows also um, quite a concern to, to do things which is succinct with the Word of God. And I think sometimes uh, an association that is made is that, that churches that are perceptively spiritual, and, uh, and we know we hate the word supernatural, yes, yes. because it's been it's so been, nuanced. It's, been, it's a wonderful word, but it's been destroyed. Uh, absolutely. It's such a loaded term. Yes. But, but, but there needs to be a form of accountability, and you welcome that. You welcome scrutiny. Yes. One of the things that we see in the cults, though, is there is no form of accountability. The leader, in actual fact, is the final authority on everything, and he is not open for any form of scrutiny. And I um, to themselves. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And this is not what we see, you know. Um, and, and usually those leaders will keep people accountable to this special revelation. Um, we see this um, very often. And families have been destroyed. And like you said, Due to the fact that there's no authority, no accountability, uh, and, and nobody that can speak into your love, uh, into your life, and again I'm saying, you know, um, um, unfortunately, 
YouTube is not the platform to correct people. And mm. there's only a few people. I can't read a list or a letter that is that, is that long yes. that people sent you. You're going to have to employ somebody to do that just yes. to answer everybody. Yes. Unfortunately, you do not have time. Yes. But in and of itself, you, you, you really have never exerted yourself, um, you know, as, as a leader and said to your people, I am infallible. Uh, if you want to see, you know, um, the standard of God, look at me. Again, in this fruit speak, I think, mm. uh, uh, and, and, and I want to be so careful to say, I've never said, you know, people think we're not perfect or anything. Mm. No, but those are sure. points I can, we can clearly say, you know, there's things you could say, oh, I've missed it here, I made a mistake here. Mm. But in those things, no, I think those are the basics of Christianity. It's, um, I believe if we did do those things, there would have been a lot of people that have gone out of our church, would have spoken about it. And, you know, I believe there would have been a lot of, more where uh, you can really test that fruits by really seeing a man's family, you can see it by man's uh, the people that is around him. The fruits of the ministry, Jesus says, you will know a prophet by his fruits, mm. and um, for me that is that is very important. But no, I have never um, I have never said I am the special one or the exclusive no, and, one. And let me just say this: a cult leader in and of himself never allows his people that, and I don't want to say under him because you know again I don't want to create a concept. Yes. But he's close people to question him, and something that. I nearly fell off my chair mm -hmm. is when I met your leadership they can question you they, they, and I'm not talking about disrespect yes. because you, you don't want to create a culture where in, in especially a church where there's a culture of disrespect yes, but, yes. but you're open for for your people to ask and and to to speak to you openly and honestly there's no fear and disagree and and disagree and, and, and say one. hey listen what's going on here um, that is something that is quite it, it took me a bit off guard uh, when I saw the openness with your people and the way they speak to you. And again, I'm not saying they're disrespectful, but yes. you know, in and of itself, they, they definitely have a, a confidence to come to you and speak to you yes. forthrightly about what they experience and what they see. The unfortunate thing in cults, and especially in, in South Africa, is it seems to be a predominant fear which prevail those communities. Um, you, you don't have, you don't drive your church, uh, you serve your church. It's almost, uh, you know, as far as I can see, there is no you know the old hierarchical structure of yes. leadership the yes. the man sits on top and he he directs you know yes. only way down where it needs to happen it's almost as if you flip the triangle you know and you, so you serve from the bottom up yeah. and uh, that is that is pretty good to see i think first of all people misunderstand pyramid scheme <laughs> you know obviously every you know you know a church is a business what i mean by that is there's expenses there's income there's a budget there's there is staff mm -hmm. there's employees and with that you have a apart from just preaching on a sunday you've got a whole business or you may rather not say business mm. uh, even though jesus said a business but let's leave that alone uh, organization if i can you know you've got staff we've got 24 staff so there will always be a hierarchical system in an employee manner i mean you, you employ employ and uh, i think that is just common sense but when it comes to leadership, there's a thing called servant leadership. Mm -hmm. you know, I remember when uh, all my pastors here, uh, before they were pastors, um, they were just uh, with us in the like, ministry. The first thing I did, uh, you know, and that is why there was not to be anything funny, but I washed their feet. But that was, you know, we were so, we, 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 I just wanted to serve them. And that, you know, now they're at a place where they're running the ministry. Mm -hmm. So they've come from that route mm. where um where uh they understand and the same thing with with the church it is just obviously impossible to serve a thousand people you know so now we serve them with the word of god we serve them with prayer but we put the principles of serving in now what you said about fear the three legs of witchcraft is to manipulate mm. to intimidate and to eventually control mm. dominate mm. so where you see those three things operating there's witchcraft presence and there's a cult-like presence so manipulation says I trick you into doing what I want you to do, what you don't want to do. Sure. Uh, intimidate says, I scare you into doing what I want you to do against your own will. Uh, and domination says, I force you to mm. do what you don't want to do, uh, what I want you to do against your will. Yeah. And, uh, you know, where we see anything where those things come in, even in a church, it means there is a yeah. sign of uh, whether it's cult-like or especially witchcraft, you know, that is predominant there. And um, uh, uh, that obviously that then brings it to a place of fear with cult leaders where people fear that person, not respect, but fear. Mm -hmm. They fear, there's a big difference. You know, mm -hmm. you can see when someone fears somebody, every decision is made on what they say. They need their approval for everything. And fear controls, fear is the very spirit that Satan uses, you know, even sure. in Satanism, they, 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 they everything's controlled by fear. It seems like in cults there is a redefinition of terms and a redefinition and reuse of words that 
that fits the collective narcissism of this echo chamber which this individual have created to control the group yes. and you are very very keenly aware of the fact that you know pe people should not grow dependent on the definition of terms they should uphold the bible and what the bible say concerning what is believed about certain elements of yes. truth i know certain churches which have redefined for instance the word faith where faith in and of itself is it's not the assurance of god's word and me being dependent on what god has promised but rather faith could be the actualization of my own potential yes, yes. and it sounds so right it sounds it sounds so good um, and and you've you've said you know uh, there, there were certain instances we had to bring people back and you need yes. to you needed to say listen this is what we say when we define certain terms yes uh, you in and of yourself and in the church you guys do not redefine certain things which is elementary taught about the prophetic about faith about the word of god about the centrality of christ which deviates and goes away from the orthodox position of what is esteemed in for instance bible doctrines and christian theology is it quite hard in a church environment where you're at um, to let go of your power is it quite hard for you to to hand over and to empower people so that they can accomplish their ministries well let me say it like this and, and i want to answer this really genuinely uh, we have to be continually aware that people become dependent upon a gift. Mm, mm. And we have to understand that weakness in society, in, in mankind. It is a weakness. And again, I'm saying, you know, that is, it depends on the leader. Is the leader a narcissist? Is the leader uh, a narcissist? Does he feed is, off it? Does he yeah. feed off that? And a narcissist obviously now is just um, really, uh, you know, loosely thrown around. We understand that. But does he feed off it? Does it, it that give him identity? And that is, mm, that is mm, so mm. it's insecure leadership. So very, sure. very dangerous aspect of leadership. Now, to hand over, so, you know, to stick through that terminology again, I think is a moral compass apart from the word and accountability and the structures that we have in place. To hand over power to, is it, how did I, how did I, um, or do I find it difficult to 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 hand over power? Uh, decision making, I believe, also, you know, uh, uh, yes and no. I feel that every person that 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 runs a church or so, and you know, that's a boss or that's very. Um, very meticulous they uh, it's difficult because you built it from from kind of like from yourself you know to be really honest i have not found it difficult to hand over power because i've never seen any other way of growth uh, mm. so i've empowered my my pastors i've given them the right to question me i've given them the any decision we make it is not uh, leon says it is we have a uh, we have a certain obviously type of meeting and we understand the legalities of the of the land but it is listen this is what I think. Tell me what mm. you guys think. And, uh, you know, not even on a voting system, mm. although we understand the legalities, but but I had to hand over power to grow the church further, but also to protect the church that I do not become exclusive. You visited us on uh, one of our evenings. Yes. My heart was really also, you can ask me anything. You can look at anything. You know, you can look at the, the people, the health, the dependency is their codependency. Mm -hmm. um, from a perspective of an outsider that have maybe heard some things and, uh, you know, that maybe concerns came to you also mm. about us. And uh, just to open yourself on that side to say there's, there's nothing that, that we are hiding. Um, and But what is your experience or um, what you might have seen that might have been misperceived or uh, what well, you, when it comes to codependency, well, when it comes to things that you looked out for. Well, uh, first of all, I think one of the accusations that were leveled against you, which I was quite keenly um, wanting to see, is that, you know, usually in a church structure where there's a cultic structure, there is a form of control. Yes. Um, and it, it is clearly defined. And I'm not talking about somebody managing his church. There's an acute fear of the leader. Yes. There's an acute understanding that whatever the leader does or say, uh, in actual fact, is the law, and that is what should be decreed. The other thing which uh, also was quite startling is just when you said in the meeting, you, the church is only actually five years old. <laughs> Think about that. The church in and of itself is really just starting up and, yes. and gaining momentum. And I looked at this and I thought to myself, well, you know, you've, you've accomplished quite a lot of impressive things in, in, in what God has allowed for you to do. Um, but I think a lot of things that we've seen have been misconstructed. One of the things is that this is a hyphenated church. It's built on a hyphenated ideology of miracles, signs and wonders, and people come only for that. That is not true. Uh, we saw that, no, no, that is actually a deep pastoral concern. Yes. I just sat back and I looked and I, I said, okay, Lord, um, do they hype the crowds? <laughs> One of the clips that I actually made is that, and, and we've spoken about this, Leon, yes. that in certain churches, people actually actively do things to stir certain emotions, emotions and evoke certain responses yes. in their people. Yes. I looked very acutely and I said, you know what, if Leon is doing this, I will catch him out. 
Yes, uh, yes. You know, I, I will do it. And, you know, I've been in services where I did see the Holy Spirit of God move. And I can say that what I've seen was not a manipulation. Um, you see a lot of people that try to conjure the yes. Holy Spirit. Yes, 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 and I always say, you do not conjure the Holy Spirit. You know, um, the Holy Spirit is God. Yes. We, we do not conjure the Holy Spirit. And, 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 and so I was looking for that, but I didn't see that. But I did see people that truly um, had an experience with God. And how do you know somebody had an authentic experience with God? Their life changed and their yes. hunger for Jesus yes. Yes. just absolutely yes. shines. Yes. Every single person, people didn't know who I was. Yes. Okay. Every person, people in the church, in the community, every time they spoke, they were so zealous of Jesus. Yes. Not Leon. Yes. Uh, they were zealous of Jesus. And that really that that really stood out for me. You know, we understood that they there was differences, but there was also a misunderstanding sure. of even tidbits of information mm, and so on mm. that was sent and uh, obscure emails and obscure emails and, and, sure. and you actually you actually suggested it, which I thought was was brilliant to say that, you know, Leon, I, you know, I can't just go and delete my videos. It's going to what benefit is it going to have? Mm. Because because we are trying to prove a point here of mm. two uh, camps being able to come together, show the mm. unity in Christ. I want to thank you for that as well. Sure. I think it is. it, it shows progression. I think it shows uh, development you know, Absolutely. and growth in, in the body. Let me just also say this. For me personally, you know, I was sleeping last night. I was thinking to myself, this is very sacred. I really mean this. I think a, a lot of people don't understand what we're trying to do and how much prayer and how much conversation in the background took place before we did this. Yes. And uh, that won't stop. We will still keep on praying for one another. Yes. I'll still speak to you. Yes. You will still speak to me. I think I think that is needed. And whatever is happening here is birthed out of a relationship. Yes, yes. There is something relationally going on here. It's good for us to hold each other accountable, but it needs to be done in brotherly love and in a yeah. relational aspect yes. of that. Yes. And I think for me personally, um, it is key. Yes. It is key. And, I, and again, I want to thank you for your community. You guys have been good to me. Um, I actually ministered at another church and you guys played for me to stay in a place so I could get to that <laughs> ministry with Muslims. And uh, I want to thank you for that as well. Thank you so much for your hospitality That's um, and the church. It's and a blessing. Thank you so much, Rudolf. Thank you so much, everyone. <laughs>